There's a passage where the Buddha says that heedlessness is the path to death. In other words, when you're sloppy and careless, you die. Of course, he's not talking only about physical survival, although it is an important consideration that most people die because of their own carelessness. A lot of people do. But he's talking more here about the survival of the mind, the good qualities in your mind. And when you're careless, the good qualities in your mind die. And when those die, what do you have left? And there may be brute survival of the body, but that's not worth all that much. And so we come to practice the Buddha's teachings as basically survival techniques for the mind, survival tactics for the mind. How to keep the mind's good qualities going strong through observing the precepts, practicing concentration, developing discernment. That's the path. Like the meditation we're doing right now, that's a survival tactic for the mind, both on the everyday level and the moment of death. The tactics you learn, the techniques you learn while your meditation are going to stand you in good stead. So these steps that we have here, you know, focusing on the breath, making the breath comfortable, spreading the breath throughout the body, allowing the breath to grow calm to the point where there's a sense of ease and rapture, beginning stages of breath meditation, those aren't useful only on the cushion or on your meditation seat. They're also useful in daily life. In other words, by focusing on the breath, you keep the mind in the present moment to begin with, because that's an important place to stay, because that's where all your important decisions are being made. All your karma is being created right there in the present moment. And if you're not there, okay, a lot of it gets decided on a subconscious level, on a reactive level. And you're off someplace else. Here are the forces that are shaping your life, and you're not watching over them. So the first thing to do is just bring yourself into the present moment. And then create a sense of ease and well-being in the present moment as well. One that helps you stay there, but also gives the mind something to feed on. Ultimately, of course, we would want to get the mind to a place where it doesn't have to feed. But in the meantime, it's got to feed on something, so get it, give it something good to feed on. The sense of well-being that you create simply by breathing in a way that feels good, breathing out in a way that feels good. So your mind doesn't go off feeding on things outside. What this person said, what that person did, that kind of stuff is junk food. It may be fun to feed on, but it doesn't give the give them mind any nourishment. It actually saps your strength. Like all the fast food you can get, there's so much cholesterol in there. It may taste good for a while, but over the long term it's bad for you. Well, the normal things the mind tends to feed on in the course of the day, this person's actions, that person's words, it's junk food for the mind. And you find when the mind has something really good to feed on right here on, in the present moment, it doesn't want to go out and feed outside. Things can pass right by you. You see other people's words, you see what they do, and it just goes right past you in the sense that it doesn't come in and wound the mind. You see it clearly. It's not that you're oblivious to these things, and you can make good choices on what to do when someone else does something wrong, makes a mistake. But it doesn't wound the mind, because you haven't taken it in. Most of us are like little children. Everything, anything gets near your mouth, you swallow it right down. Rocks, bits of glass, and then they wound you. Then you complain about what other people are doing. Well, it's your fault that you go and swallow the stuff down. So if you give the mind something good to feed on, like the comfortable sensation of the breath coming in and going out, the mind has a good place to feed. As it gets comfortable, you begin to notice the, lack, the times when it's not comfortable. And a lot of times that's associated with unskillful states of mind arising when anger arises, when greed arises, when fear arises, when jealousy arises. These things will have a change in the breath. And if you're there with the breath, and you're used to having the breath being comfortable, you notice these changes immediately. 
that alerts you to the fact that something's gone wrong in the mind. Again, for most of us, we're off someplace else. When these things begin to take a, a foothold in the mind, by the time you realize they're there, they've taken over. And they kill off whatever goodness you may have. That's the whole point on why heedlessness is the path to death. You get careless about what's happening in the mind. And then all, all sorts of things can start coming in. So, but when you're right there, sensitive to the slightest little unpleasantness in the breath, okay, it alerts you to when things are happening. And then what do you do? Well, then that, the other step that we do here, once the breath is comfortable, you let it spread throughout the body. So you breathe through that uncomfortable breath. Breathe in such a way that it loosens up the tension in the body that goes with the anger or with the fear or whatever. And then you find yourself in a much better position to act on it reasonably, wisely, with clarity. Because you're not overwhelmed with the sense you've just got to get that tension or whatever out of your system. Because it's already dissolved out of your system. What's left is the awareness that, okay, something should be done, but it should, it, should it be done right now or should we do it later? You can see much more clearly what the situation is, what the appropriate response is. So these basic steps in breath meditation are very important for daily survival of the goodness of the mind. Keep you in touch with the decisions being made in the mind, keep you in touch with the emotions that are threatening to overcome the mind, and give you tools to deal with them. So that you are in charge. Even more so when life comes to an end, the fact that you've developed these skills is going to be very helpful. Most people are overwhelmed by the process. Their body is always, which used to seem to work okay, suddenly starts falling apart. The body which they identified with starts falling apart. Then where do they go? For people who don't have any training in meditation, it's a, it's a real killer. Not only physically, but also mentally. But if you've got these skills mastered, you've got a better place for the mind to be. You can deal with whatever thoughts come up, and all kinds of thoughts are going to come thronging into your awareness at that point. This regret, that disappointment, this complaint. And it's going to be a lot of negative stuff. But if you've got good, solid mindfulness, a good, clear awareness in the present moment, you can just watch these things come and watch them go. You don't have to grab onto them. If you're really skilled in your meditation, you will have found the place where the present moment opens up into the deathless. Then you're really safe. No matter what happens, the body falls apart, all kinds of things can happen. But there's that secure place. And John Fu once said that when you practice meditation, you're practicing how to die properly. And these skills that we're working on, where we're sitting right here, they're your survival skills on a day-to-day -day level, and also when time comes for the mind to separate from the body, and to separate from all its mental events, everything associated with this life, the awareness that's left. Now, okay, that separates out. In the course of doing so, if you do it skillfully, God, there's, there's nothing to worry about, either in the present or on in the future. <laughs>